Hi everyone, it's FSKH Fashion Drawing Tutorials and in this lesson we're going to render this beautiful sequence and ostrich feather dress by Prabal Gurung from his um, um, 2020 resort collection. And here are the tools that you'll need mostly many many gray markers. And uh, you have this pose for level 3 and higher uh, template set for Mm, this month, but um, I'm I want to focus more on the texture so you can use any pose that you want. So um, first, I'm going to draw the dress. We have this uh, fold gathering at the waist mm, and uh, this cascading folds. And I'm going just to draw as I see it. I uploaded the reference image to the Patreon, so you can just um, also open it on a different device and just look at what I'm doing and what I'm trying to show. But I will try also uh, to explain why certain parts are lighter and other parts are darker. And right now I just I just try to draw everything of similar lengths and sizes. And as you remember, in fashion illustration, we exaggerate a little bit certain things. Like if some, something is narrow, we draw it narrower. If something is big, we draw it a bit bigger. Uh, because there are many, many mm, illustrations, especially on Instagram, um, when someone tags uh, with like a sketch or hashtag, um, I can see that when people try to draw something as they see it, there is a lot of space left, especially skirts, they look too um, like straight and narrow. And with the model that is stretched that much, like it looks like there is too much empty space around. So it's important to draw like some pose that um, occupies maybe more space and also draw the details a bit differently. Like if it's skirt, even if it's a little bit moving because of the movement of the model or the wind, it will occupy more space than just straight like pencil skirt. So, but of course, of course, sometimes it depends on the design. So you can see how I drew these cascading folds. Try to draw like level by level, like upper um, triangle, then the lower piece, then the lower one, and so on. So I need uh, the base of uh, ice gray three, but first I want to draw some folds, even though they might not be that much visible. But whenever you render texture, <clears throat> try to think about uh, the relief. I mean, uh, so whenever I color something, I still prefer to show um, the geography in some way. So, so I'm defining for myself, for example, that your breasts are going to be lighter because they are elevated, the area between the breasts maybe will be a bit darker, the sides darker, the folds darker. So uh, after I cover everything with one layer of ice gray 3, I will already see uh, the geography of her body. So here we have some folds. Even though, uh, what I mean is that even though I need darker colors to show all those shadows, um, it's still a nice um, habit to start showing all those um, shadows in the beginning. Because every layer gives some information, even if it's very subtle. So here... And now I can cover everything with one layer of ice gray 3. So the same marker. And every fold, because every segment of that cascading fold is quite big. 
which means that fabric will have some small depressions on its surface and we need to show it with uh, one layer of uh, some like base marker because fabric is not super flat especially if it's a huge piece of fabric so um, you could actually use uh, this way of showing sh shadows for fabrics like wool or um, some like cotton just very you know not that strong shadows not that much of contrast uh, light absorbing fabrics would have this way of showing shadows like you apply them with one layer and then uh, I'm using ice gray 4 just uh, just a bit darker because here I need to show this area inside of the fold. I need to show uh, these deep folds at her waistline. And um, gray markers are really important, so they might be boring when you choose um, markers uh, that you want uh, that you want to buy, but they they're vital. You would use them very often. So I want to add a little bit of blue, so I'm adding blue pearl. It's called nice uh, light blue. You can use lilac, you can use something else at your disposal. <clears throat> uh, all these shiny fabrics, they are super reflective. And right now the fabric is not shiny, but it's going to be sequence dressed. That's why I'm adding some, uh, some, some hues so it reflects the surrounding. I, I keep working with Ice Gray 3. Okay. So you can see the shape now. We have kind of Z um, shape and uh, al also remember um, pay attention where you have the overlaps so the upper layers are on the top of the lower layers so we need to show the shadows along that uh, like hemline and also try to draw all the lines a bit differently because fabric doesn't lay like perfectly the same way. And you can see that we already have so much information by adding all these different shadows, showing all those folds. And it, it makes a difference. When we add all those dots and shadows with the darker markers, this uh, layer underneath will still tell the information because each um, each stroke gives a meaning so always also when you add them think why you're adding it exactly here like and I prefer um, using wider nib when I work especially when I work with the lower part of the skirt because um, it just it looks better because we have huge uh, folds at the bottom and um, and plus it's faster and uh, just finishing with a smaller nib Okay, and don't forget about the back part of the skirt. If it's visible, we need to show it. So I'm using for now eyes gray four, I'm just coloring it. It should be a bit further as well. So I'm not drawing it at the same level 
<clears throat> as this front part of the skirt and I'm drawing it behind her foot. So now I'm using like dry black uh, marker. I really like keeping dry black markers till they are absolutely dry because they work, work perfectly for hair and for some situations. Next I'm using cold gray 5 and, uh, and I'm applying it with like dots and I'm trying to touch the surface of the paper fast and like with very nib of the marker so the dots are not too big because if you touch for too long or you push then you'll get really huge dots and um, I just like the way that smaller dots look uh, they look more delicate and uh, appropriate because sequence on this distance should be really really small so mostly I'm applying cool gray 5 everywhere where we're supposed to have shadows so you you see we have those folds like um, that we drew with a black marker that are stretching from your waistline so this is the part where fabric goes inside it's kind of a valley and on its sides you should have some elevations which I left lighter and I'm adding some ice gray 4 just next to cool gray 5 and on the top of cool gray 5 you basically can color the area with the cool gray 5 dots because that part is quite dark but I also try to build some transition between the base and this dark area so I'm adding many many dots on the border between cool gray 5 dots and uh, the lighter area so we get this effect and I keep working with cool, cool gray 5 I'm showing um, because the dress itself is quite dark and we start with lighter markers and then we work like just add the dark ones so if it was like a red dress we would use uh, pink first and then add dark and da dark and red dots maybe we, we, we would mix some a bit different um, type of red I'm adding warm gray 3 and uh, well here I'm adding cool gray 4 and here I'm just mixing different shades of gray and uh, well because again we have um, like reflective um, texture and that's why it's possible to use even more like you can even use some hue on one side because you just imagine that you she's uh, next to maybe some blue curtains or something like that or there is a light of different color and um, so cool gray 5 well mostly we add it along the outline inside the folds we're adding it if there is a huge like we just worked with this upper part of the cascading fold it's quite big that's why in the middle you might have some dark area which is which a bit goes um, which is lower if we are talking about the surface the fabric is not super flat so it's just a bit like a hole so we make it a bit darker I hope that my explanation makes sense because um, you know it's like just talking to yourself when you when you get it but I hope that you, you understand what I'm saying so basically I add cool gray 5 inside the folds um, inside of uh, some depressions on the surface of the fabric and then just around it next to it I add a bit lighter gray it can be ice gray 4 it can be cool gray 4 and um, yeah just you you need to soften the contrast that's why you add in between a bit lighter gray and where I add 
cool gray five. Well, here you can see I'm adding it just below each segment of this cascading fold because there we have shadows. And um, here we have this uh, outline. And uh, here we have a huge piece of fabric. So I'm adding some shadows in the middle. And whenever you have several shadows, like here we have shadows because of the overlap, I just connect them. And I'm adding ice gray for and build, build this gradient, but this gradient is made up of dots. Um, some people find this um, process relaxing, but uh, some of you might find it a bit boring, adding many, many dots, but that's how you show sequence. But the final result is always um, impressive and you will be proud of yourself once you finish. Try experimenting with different colors. So if it would be emerald, you would use some light uh, green at the base and then add uh, em like um, some mid-tone, then darker green and maybe some grays in between. Also, take a look at the real sequence dresses because there you will see many, many colors and those are just marker, different hues of marker that you can match. More of Cool Gray 5. We also need uh, to make the base darker. As you can see, um, the upper part of the dress ended up being dark because when we add like highlights, now I'm using as group Ice gray four. When you add highlight with a correction pen or um, it can be opaque white liquid that is used for illustration or um, even white pen, you need some darker base, otherwise it won't be visible and as a result it won't shine. Okay, so now we're working with the low part. And here we have less of um, very prominent um, falls, so it will be maybe a bit easier. When you work with this lower part where you have the fabric stretched and in some way it looks like curtains, and because curtains they have like the fabric is a little bit compressed, you might have several folds. So in this way, here in this situation is the same. So trying to avoid drawing the fabric as something um, flat and just stretched without any folds. And also try to avo avoid drawing folds the same way. Like just... Um, I don't know, like very often I see folds of the same size, of perfectly geometric shape. It just, it just takes away all the life from the illustration. So now I'm just trying to separate the folds with some shadows. And you can see I'm applying shadows, all of them are different, like... Um, you can see that I separated uh, the shadows, but it should be, I mean, if, even if you break it, it should be very, uh, very, um, how to say, you shouldn't do it abruptly, like there is a hole between shadows. You, st you still need to connect. Um, so it's one kind of path of shadow or one path of light because whenever you break something there should be a huge reason for that and whenever I have a huge area that is lit 
I still add some small islands with um, uh, some shadow because their fabric might a little bit maybe like some group of sequence they just um, changed a little bit the angle and they don't get that much of light from from the source of light so and it can happen you know the sequence uh, dresses they they are often like that so that's why I add here and there some um, islands with uh, dots uh, with cool gray 5 and then I'm going to use like cool gray 4 ice gray 4 just add many many dots to fill in that space that is left Sometimes I'm, I color a bit the area with the cool gray 5. I add some like strokes instead of dots and um, a bit of blue also like we did before. Ice gray 4. There shouldn't be restrictions. You should be open with the texture that you're drawing. Just take a look. If you feel like you need to color some area or you need to add some several strokes, just do it. Adding more of cool gray 5. Um, more you add all these layers, more you will feel like if you need more of the contrast and add darker marker again. So I'm adding strokes. So drawing is basically about seeing things, not that much about using the tools that you have, because learning how to use a certain tool, it takes just much less time than learning seeing things. So really take a look at each texture that you draw and try to understand how to translate it into the drawing. So that's why you need to practice, but not just using markers and doing same and same things. You need to look at things like at real things and maybe use this technique or make your own one. Okay. And we need to have this piece that is at the back to be darker. A bit more of cool gray 5. Okay, so now, just before adding sequence, I want to darken certain folds and add extra cool gray 5. more of ice gray 4, cool gray 5, pay attention at those folds that look like loops and on the side between them we have kind of stretched triangles. 
So now I'm using correction pen. This is a just office stationery that you would use to hide the mistakes when you write. Like, um, so I'm adding, I didn't show the whole process because my hand was just closing everything from the view. But here I added many, many dots of different sizes, everything along the folds and on the breasts. And now just around it, I'm adding many, many tiny dots with a um, uh, white pen with a smaller nib size. I'm using Sakura 05. And it really gives small, small dots. If you don't have it, you can skip this part or use uh, the pen that you have. But um, just so you know that uh, it really gives this. Uh, nice finishing and um, this difference in the sizes of this dots just makes it really nice. So I'm adding this correction pen on the top of really huge folds like um, and not everywhere otherwise it will become too shiny and since not every part shines like that it will look a bit unnaturally. But try to avoid adding these dots to really dark parts because sometimes, like when I have classes and students add these huge dots on the parts where we had just made shadows with cool gray five, and it just makes no sense. So, and it will make no sense for the viewer as well because we are already used to, uh, I mean, understanding this relationship between the highlights and shadows. So for the area that is a little bit less, that has less intense light, I'm using uh, this, this uh, 05 pen. And I'm also adding it, uh, as I told you before, around that huge spot with light. And uh, also adding uh, this details as well, like the hemline. You can add really, really tiny dots in the dark area, which is just next to highlighted area, which just builds this transition. But if you have a huge area with, like with the the fold with shadows, don't add the light just in the middle of that shadow area. Okay, so working the same way, just going further. Okay, so far I, I love how it how it looks. We can use black pencil to add shadows, um, maybe just uh, along that folds inside of those loops. And uh, we get more contrast. Now we have the super strong highlights and much dark shadows. And you can pay attention that on your skin, I used some lavender, which uh, really looks good with a lighter skin if you use instead of like gray or just darker skin tone, if you experiment and use um, lavender, you can try it. So I used almond, lavender and ivory for your skin. 
ivories for the, the most lead part. So I added some strong highlights along the hemline. And here we are going to have ostrich feather. For that I'm using black marker. And um, try to use loose strokes. Um, try to very softly touch the paper. So your strokes are as um, thin as possible. And I am letting myself to do it freely and uh, at ease. So my strokes have all slightly different direction. But they all still have um, the direction like they are more or less vertical because we have gravity that pulls them downwards. So a little bit more of cool gray five and um, some blue, especially when all those dots dry, you can add some. Um, some hue on the top, very softly touching with a marker nib again to show the reflection of surrounding. So, okay, so we're going a bit um, lower, working with the lower parts. Again, I'm starting with the stronger highlights with a correction pen. And again, you can see that on the sides of these highlights, I have more of cool gray 5. So this choice of highlights is not just random. I just pick the most lead part. And then I'm using um, white ink pen, adding many, many dots. And now drawing the ostrich feather. And here we need some to, to show some texture We're using Kugri 5. And let's add some highlights with white pen. Okay. A bit of Kugri 4 just inside between those strokes. So we're left with this lower part of the skirt. <clears throat> First, let's cover the area with the feather. Okay, so... And again, as you remember, we showed some faults by separating them with the shadows. So, just in the middle of those folds, I'm adding the highlights. At the bottom, I'm more like doing it freely because there we should have more of different wrinkles because the fabric is freely laying um, and hitting the ground. Okay, so... Um, here, I just want in this pose to stretch your knee a little bit because um, we can't really see the second leg. Okay. 
again. Now adding many many tiny dots with 0.5 white ink pen. It is also an alternative way to show like shiny metallic, like shimmery surfaces with um, with white ink pen with this tiny nib size. Might take more time, but um, it looks really nice. So more of stronger highlights and then more of the pen. And just after adding all those highlights, I feel like that's not, there is not enough of contrast. So I'm using cool gray five again, separating those folds. Because my upper part of the dress is much darker right now than the lower part. And uh, using cool gray 5 to color that uh, back part. Using Patty for her knee. And I usually use uh, some pencil for ostrich feather just to add some more thin light pieces of feather because markers quite thick and opaque and um, for the feather final step would be adding some highlights I use for that uh, silver Prismacolor Premier pencil so and but you can use white pencil as well or some light uh, tone of any hue so I want just to make more of that feather. And final step is uh, just coloring your shoes. And uh, since we're focusing on this dress, I want to stop at this um, at this stage. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. And you will use this technique for both sequence and feather in your own projects. And um, yeah, so thank you for supporting my art and being my patron. And uh, share your suggestions for the next tutorials. And uh, tell me about uh, any problems that you have. What is difficult for you when you draw sketches? And see you very soon in the next tutorial. Stay safe and have a nice day.